Thanks for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, we are looking at the fact that the federal government is suspending uh, import duties and taxes, and uh, people are suspecting that uh, it will lower the food prices. The Comptroller General of Customs, Bashir Adeni, has expressed hope that the suspension of duties and taxes on imported food items over some time would help reduce food prices. Adeni said, and I quote, the protest was premised on a number of things, one of them being to end hunger. We discovered that a significant amount of food consumed in Nigeria is imported. Importation takes some time. So one of the things the president has done to cushion the effect of the cost of importation is to suspend custom duties and taxes on imported food items for a period of time. Our guest this morning is Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Okay. We're hoping you'll bring some wisdom into this discussion. <laughs> 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 okay. I hope I try. <laughs> okay. Now, um, we're talking about suspending tariff on essential food items and all that. What do you think that will do to our economy? I'm hoping this would help uh, most sincerely because it is bad in the market as it is. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, just last week, I went to the market to price um, a bag of rice. So uh, this is Lagos. And, uh, the bag of rice costs right now between 75,000 to 90,000 naira. Uh, depending on the brand of the rice or the kind of rice that you like. Until you go to the uh, designated <laughs> area for 40,000. Okay, so, so, so that's now the cost of it. Now the government has said, oh, we are sending this rice. Uh, it's going to cost 40,000 naira. I have not seen it. I'm not, have you seen it? Have you been you able to, to buy it? You have to register for it. You have yeah. to register. Yes, as a okay. worker. So, not as, as, as uh, all right. So, but the point is, the cost of food items really in the market is a, it's a, it's a big problem. Um, aside paying high electricity, the next thing people will pay money more these days is food. So if this can happen, if this works, what the, the customer is saying, and we can lift those duties of food, that's going to help a lot. Because unfortunately, uh, we import everything we eat in this country, which is not supposed to be so. We are blessed, you know, with a lot of resources, farmlands, and I wonder why we are not, you know, farming and, and, and producing what we eat. We try, but not enough, you know, to feed the entire country. So it's a big problem. My second concern also is, I mean, the custom boss will be saying this in Abuja. They need to go and monitor those borders. They need to go down and monitor those places so that they're able to see that there's implementation of what we have said and agreed in Abuja. Uh, because the big problem in Nigeria is we say one big thing, one big policy in Abuja. When you go down uh, to where it ought to be implemented, it is not done. You know, the same thing that happened with uh, lifting the import duties on um, uh, uh, solar items, you know, at some time by the government. But unfortunately, players in the sector said when they, they get to the ports, you know, they still get to pay a lot of money, you know, uh, to bring in some of this item, which increases the cost, you know, of, of the products, of course, on the market. So there's one thing to say this thing, and there's another thing to follow through implementation. But uh, the current state of things uh, for Nigerians when they go to the market is very bad and, and this is what has contributed to the hunger it's what has led to the protest that we have seen in the last couple of days this is what have left nigerians uh, 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 sad you know and, and worried of you know their situation and what they are going through so i think this is what i'm thinking yeah but is that not like uh, taking only paracetamol for cancer what is the chemotherapy that we're thinking about this uh, thing because they're lifting the tariff on mm. food items which means yeah. we are going to import more and mm -hmm. keep importing which mm -hmm. like you said is not good enough mm -hmm. but there's no corresponding uh, lift of tariff on uh, farm inputs the fertilizers, the, mm. the herbicides and all those kind of things. Mm. No tractors are coming in by, uh, sponsored by the government and all mm -hmm, that. So mm -hmm. this is a short-term thing. Mm. How do you think that will really affect our economy uh, in the long run? More imports only impact a lot on our um, foreign reserves. You know, in the president's speech, when he gave, he said, uh, uh, we have, you know, moved from spending 97% um, of, so. of our revenue to now 68%. When we now do more of this import again, what we are doing is impacting more on that foreign reserve, which can even go up more further. So importing is not uh, a good solution for us in the long term to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. We need to move from a consumption country to a production country. This is the long term that we must focus on. If we continue to be a consumption country, 
we are only creating our we are solving the we'll be solving a problem for the short term but we are creating a problem for the long term so that's why we must move that's where the country really need to move to from cons consumption to production and the government needs to understand this you know so that's why even though i feel like uh, in the term for the meantime the suffering is so much the hunger is so much to we leave the import duties on food so more food can come in but the government needs to now be strategic you know on how do we improve on production you know and farming in country what do we need to do you know i was happy i saw the governor of anambra state you know launching um, a farming uh, uh, um, uh, initiative in Anambra State where they brought fertilizers and all of that. I mean, I, I was really glad to see Governor Soludo do that, you know, in Anambra State. Maybe it should be the approach many other governors need to also take on. You know, like a presidential candidate in the last election said, in the north, we have vast lands, you know, that we need to leverage on. We need to utilize. And they can, we can feed ourselves in this country if we make good use of those resources. You know that we have we have lands a thousand of it some countries if they have what we have as nigerians they will not even be where they are today but they're even prospering more than us that have all of these mm -hmm. things so the solution uh, the answer to your question is solution for a long term mm -hmm. is we need to move from being a consumption country to a production country that is where the solution lies in the long term and 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 this body alone is not for the president it's for the state governors and it's down to the local government you know we need to work together to see that we are moving this country in that direction. So all while the federal government will create the direction for everyone, the state and the local government needs to get working. We have 774 local governments in this country. If Who are just trying to stand on their feet, by the way, because it's just now that the ruling has favored them, that they will good. be taking their money and doing what they're supposed to do. But my, my concern... Mm is that even if we want to apportion blames to the state that is not working, they're mm. having like four times the allocation they used to have, but they're mm. still doing nothing, mm -hmm. uh, the federal government seems to be the ones that can only fight this uh, hydra-headed monster. Mm. For instance, you're talking about production. Dangote Refinery mm. is a local, a local uh, investor that mm. is trying to rear his head, and mm -hmm. the cabals are fighting him. Mm -hmm. In the power sector, we've heard that there are a lot of people who are fighting because they are involved in generator supply, or mm -hmm. solar supplies and all that so they don't want the electricity sector to to work mm -hmm. and all that so this cannot be what the the state will fight Good. so what is the president doing the presidency mm. not just the person we, we 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 can't leave this huge tax alone for the president i'll tell you for free anything that needs to work in this country it will not work because people are fighting it even this import uh, duties, the custom is saying they will raise for food items to come in. Some people within the custom will fight it because they also benefit when people pay all these import duties when they come in. The cabals are everywhere. When things are trying to work in Nigeria, there are people that make sure they don't, it doesn't work because they benefit from it. So it's not just a dangote issue or the issue within the power sector. Even this too. There are people who will be fighting. That's what I said in the beginning. Uh, but but uh, <laughs> in, your, in your opinion, mm. does the body language of the president show that he can really try to do something to fight it? I, 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 I tell, I'm saying this because of one thing. Mm. In the last administration, when the, the president, Muhammad Buhari, came, body language was the, mm. was the in thing. And everybody was afraid. Going to a party to even show off was a problem when mm. he just came until they discovered that maybe he didn't have his faculties around him. Mm -hmm. So is the, the body language of the president giving mm. any indication that the, the corrupt cabals even have an iota of fear for him? The body language for me, my view is the body language of the president is showing, even from his last address, that he is not, uh, 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 he is not connected to the people and he is disconnected in reality of what is happening. So trust me, if we are talking about the uh, body language of the president, it nothing is, will work. It, it, nothing will work because the way it seems he's disconnected from the real. Maybe they are not giving him a true picture of things, of what is happening. That's why everybody is saying the, the speech he gave is not for the protest. It's not, you know, it doesn't seem like he has answered the questions of what, you know, this protest and these young people are asking for. So I'll tell you for the body language of the president is not in line with the realities we have on ground. So therefore, his body language, those cabals and those people may not even be fearing, may not be afraid 
of what would happen. Mm. So the president needs to take this very seriously. And one thing as a leader you need to do, and which is my advice now to President uh, uh, Bola Tinubu is, you need to find a way to get your own answers beyond those people around you. Mm -hmm. You know, because those people around you may not be giving you the true, true picture of things. So what is your strategy? You know, beyond your aides and your advisors and ministers, how do you get your own on-ground feedback on what Nigerians are feeling? What is the pulse of Nigerians on issues? Mm -hmm. So that's where my advice to him, because the way he is moving now, we don't think he understands the depth of the issues the country is going through. His body language is not... I'm not sure anybody is afraid so, of his body language. So, all man, farm for your farm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. It's unfortunate that Ndume that tried to speak the truth mm -hmm. is now apologizing because mm. I don't know whatever threat he has gone through, mm. whatever promises he has been it's given. He's a politician. He, he's he, he he's apologizing to. now. So but he said he still stands on his statement. He don't fall our hand. And beg. <laughs> no, now no. he's going to be reinstated as the chief whip, so uh, he has apologized. It's, it's all politics, but we, we need to give it to Ndume in a way. He tried. You know, he tried. Right. Uh, it's not the only one. There are a few people who have... But we know this politics, that there's a way... Mm. Yeah, you, you can't be the only one speaking. A lone yeah. voice is tough, yeah. especially in the legislative. Yeah. So to it needs to be a collective. But, but we are getting there. Yeah. We, are, we are getting there. It's going, it will last for long. <laughs> we will see everything will blow up very soon. Amen to that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, those were the words of Wisdom Chap Jumbo. Everything will blow up. So if you want to blow, be, stay in Nigeria. You will blow very soon. <laughs> We'd like to thank you, Wisdom, thank for you coming so much. on the program. Always. I wish we Always. had more time. We've been talking with Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst, and that is how we are wrapping up the show this morning. It's been a pleasure having all of you uh, watching us. Let's do it again tomorrow. Bye for now.